And welcome everyone to this edition of ACAP Today for Tuesday, the 14th of April, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Arista County Action Program. Our guest today will be talking about ACAP prevention efforts. We're gonna talk both about prevention efforts as it relates to tobacco, also cessation efforts as it relates to tobacco, and then talk about uh, the opioid crisis here in our communities and why prevention efforts now more than ever are needed to combat drug use uh, in our communities. Um, so we'll be talking with our guests in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, we turn to the news today. And to do that, I, I'm joined today by Sherry Locke, who has some information on a new program or a new assistance program uh, that ACAP will be offering to community members. So Sherry, let's talk about the IRS economic impact payments and how ACAP is going to help community members who might not be able to otherwise access those. Yes, yeah, so as a community action agency, it's very important for us to meet the emergent needs of the clients that we serve in our community. And in the last couple of weeks, things have been happening very quickly. Things have been changing very quickly. And one of the items that we've seen come up time and time again are questions about the IRS economic impact payments that are starting to roll out this week. For folks who have filed their taxes in the past two years and received a payment, uh, a direct deposit um, from the federal government in the last two years, those payments will be automatically uh, deposited into their checking or savings account. So those folks will be all set. But we're having questions from folks who have either not filed in the last two years or who have not received a direct deposit from the federal government the last two years. So at our office, we have set up a process that if folks need help navigating that IRS website uh, to complete those documents that we are here and able and ready to do that. Uh, we have trained our group of coaches um, to better understand that IRS website and we really want to be the eyes and ears for folks who don't have access to technology to help them um, with those online forms through the IRS website. Um, if folks do have access to technology and want to learn more, they can go on to irs.gov. That information is right there. It's broken down very nicely, very easy to follow. Um, but again, for those folks without access to technology, we would encourage them to give us a call and again, allow us to navigate that website for them to help them get those payments um, as quickly as possible. So just to be clear, Sherry, for folks who might know that these are the what are being called the stimulus payments, are they not? Yes, that's absolutely what they're called. And on the IRS site, they, they do have a different name. Um, but uh, those are those funds to um, every American to help them uh, through this difficult time. Um, as we're hearing from partners and as cl from clients that we're serving, they, a lot of folks are waiting for these payments. So we really want to help folks um, access to those funds that will be coming to them in a faster way. All right, and so we actually will, as Sherry noted, help um, individuals who are unable to otherwise access technology actually enter uh, the data. We'll work with you confidentially um, and provide you with that assistance. Uh, our family coaches that are located throughout Aroostook County uh, will be helping in this endeavor. So all you need to do is to call that number uh, on your screen, uh, just up over my shoulder here at 764-3721, um, and we will connect you with someone who can help you complete that paperwork. So it's a new service that we're offering and a very vital one to help all of our community members uh, be able to access those services. And as Sherry noted earlier, it's not something you need to do if you file taxes in the last couple of years. That should be automatically uh, deposited for you. Um, but if you haven't for any reason and cannot access technology, please do give us a call and we'll be happy to help you with that. Sherry Locke, thank you so much for joining us for this top story today. Thank you. Otherwise, um, in ACAP news today and information that you need to know, uh, we just wanted to remind folks that we have added an online form to our website that helps us uh, assist individuals in need uh, more readily. If you go to our website and uh, see the red area that we've circled here on the screen at the bottom of our main page, you can access this fillable form. And what that will do is provide you with, uh, provide our team with greater information on what programs they might be able to help you with so that when we reach out uh, and connect back with you, uh, we'll be in a better position to know uh, how we may, may be able to assist you uh, that day. Uh, we also want you to reach out to us for two specific programs that you may not have considered before, but because of the economic challenges around COVID-19 are certainly uh, very relevant today. One, the Women, Infant, and Children's Program, which provides uh, nutritious food 
foods to families with young children, uh, preschool age children. Uh, the other, the Home Energy Assistance Program, please do call us at 764-3721. Speaking of the Home Energy Assistance Program, uh, the program has been expanded through the 1st of May for those households impacted by COVID-19 economically. The uh, look back period for income has been reduced and if you have lost your job, you can use the actual uh, zero income or the lower income calculation uh, to see if you qualify and we have scheduled additional appointments uh, on a regular basis through the 1st of May to be able to assist these individuals. So please do call us at 764-3721 if you think that we can assist you with this program as well. Financial literacy classes are being offered. We've been talking about workforce development courses and uh, courses that have been offered by our partners at UVentures Maine. Uh, this is a program being offered through ACAP's Improving Outcomes for Youth, uh, for individuals, youth age 16 through 24. The next series of online financial literacy classes for individuals in that age category take place on the evenings of the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. If you attend all three sessions, you will be awarded a $25 gift card. Please contact Chastity Holland at the number uh, or the email address on your screen if you would like to get signed up for those classes or if you know someone who, who might benefit from them. Um, we also want to remind folks that, oops, I went ahead a little too quickly there, the Wellness Shelter for Individuals Experiencing Homelessness, which uh, was opened at the University of Maine at Presque Isle late last week as part of a partnership with UMPI, ACAP, Maine Housing, and a number of other partners in our community, is now open. Uh, the census of individuals spending the night there, night there tonight is eight individuals um, who would otherwise not have a place to lay their head this evening. So we thank our partners for their generosity in making uh, this project happen. What's really great about this project as well is not only is it a place for uh, individuals to have a roof over their heads, but they're receiving some great services, including connections with adult education, um, uh, individuals uh, who need help with behavioral health or substance use, the services are available and accessible to them at the Wellness Shelter for Individuals Experiencing Homelessness. And lastly, in today's uh, news you can use, uh, this is a recruitment season for our Head Start and Early Head Start programs. If you are a parent or even an expectant parent, an expectant mother out there, um, you could qualify for our Early Head Start or Head Start programs. We encourage you to give us a call, whether those are center-based programs, if you live close to one of the center-based communities in Dyer Brook, Holton, Presque Isle, Caribou, or up in Fort Kent, or whether you live in one of the remote communities of the outlying communities and may be eligible for home-based Head Start services, please do give us a call. We would love to welcome your children into our program um, next fall. And so with that, we are going to move on now to welcome to our program our three guests that are all part of ACAP's wonderful prevention team. Uh, first of all, uh, Joellen Kelly, who has been uh, with ACAP for a number of years um, and uh, probably has not seen anything quite like this, but Joellen, I wanna welcome you first to the program, welcome. Thank you, Jason. And Elaine Sipe, who works uh, alongside Joellen as it relates to tobacco uh, as the, the topic area. Elaine does some direct service work, uh, specifically with individuals who are looking to quit. Elaine, welcome to the program. Thank you. And lastly, the newest of this trio, um, not that Elaine has been with us all together too long, but we're happy to have her as well, but Meg Hegman, who joined us um, just as the pandemic was getting underway. Uh, Meg's first day at the office was, I think, the last day or the next to last day of us actually physically being in the office for many people. And all three, Meg, welcome to the program. And all three are working indeed from home right now. So we're going to start out with Joellen. Uh, Joellen, you have been uh, doing prevention work um, for ACAP for a number of years. And a lot of that work really has required you over that period of time to be engaging in the community with individuals. And that's really not possible, at least not in the traditional sense right now. So how are you coping or working around that? So it has been a challenge um, for well over 16 years I've been doing prevention work and it's really based on doing a lot of policy work, establishing relationships um, with municipalities and schools and um, youth serving entities, whether they be child care or rec centers and really um, meeting them, doing some technical assistance with them, supporting them. And now uh, we can't do that. And it's been a challenge, not as bad with the, um, all the ones that I have a relationship with, but trying to 
get out any new programs or trying to reestablish yourself in an area that you haven't been for a little while because everybody's getting a lot of email and they're never sure if it's a real email or if it's just you know a sales pitch from someone that they don't really know. So it's been a little bit of a challenge, but um, I find that in the last week or so, I've taken the relationships that I've uh, built and asked them to help me reach out. And so now that they've got someone else that they know, it seems more maybe credible. And it's a good time maybe to do some of the work that we wouldn't normally do this time of year. And that's what I'm focusing on. So I know in prevention work, a lot of the work focuses on youth uh, to try to instill healthy behaviors um, that will life, last through a lifetime. So talk to me about some of the resources that, uh, that are available uh, for youth right now. So part of the tobacco initiation piece is we have, uh, we work with schools around policy. We try to do uh, education around vaping with community with um, schools and also with youth serving entities. I um, particularly have some really good um, slides and things and uh, infographs, like the one that you're seeing now that really support parents or um, other educational um, um, you know, schools or what have you, right today, yesterday, and today I sent a lot out to um, some other different uh, community colleges and schools that they might be able to share with youth that maybe were vaping that no longer can vape because of course with the pandemic now they're home and isolated and they're having withdrawals and these are just some things that we offer to help support that endeavor. Normally in a regular work week we have uh, programs like sidekicks, we have um, different objectives or we can refer uh, to the Maine Tobacco Helpline, and then they call them. And of course, right in our own ACAP office, we have um, Elaine who is um, uh, doing tobacco cessation, and she's another person we refer to. Uh, so all of our family coaches, our WIC staff, they're all trained in non-clinical outreach, so they can make referrals to the Maine Tobacco Helpline as well. And that's all part of the program that I work under for tobacco prevention. I noticed you mentioned, and certainly in the 16 years that you've been working in prevention, um, the concept of vaping has really become a one that um, has, has really, I think, come to the fore and has, has sort of probably your, your biggest uh, challenge area, if you will, right now. Um, and it seems like youth are particularly um, attracted to uh, vaping at this time. How are you working with that population and what, do you, what are some thoughts that you have as more adults in their lives now is, I mean, my 17 year old son is home every day uh, now. So there's opportunity for talking to your teens about things like this that probably didn't exist in our fast paced lifestyle before the pandemic. Absolutely. And the, you know, we're at about a 7% uh, tobacco rate in Roostick County for youth. Um, we're closer to 27% of youth having tried some type of uh, electronic nicotine delivery system or vaping. So we have an infograph, and I think you can put that up, that gives examples of how you can talk to teens about vaping to really get the facts. And then there's some sites that um, we offer to look at that are reputable, to listen and uh, have open and honest conversations. Those are all things that are really key to youth today. And if they are home and they are going through all those withdrawals, they are going to have the results the same way people who, um, adults who would be smoking or using uh, any type of a nicotine product would have for withdrawals. When the concept of, of vaping first came out, a lot of people, I think, thought, Joellen, that it was really a, a safe alternative to tobacco use. And, and certainly over time, that's proven not to be the case, has it? That's has correct. It? Um, we always say, um, uh, it may have less um, cancer causing agents, but that doesn't mean it's safe. And back last fall, there were um, over 2,500 um, really lung injuries due to vaping. And even though we've seen a big downturn on that because um, probably more because they've understand 
that per, where to purchase it and what have you. It's still the aerosol has a lot of fine particulate and they're causing a lot of fungi infections. So it certainly is not safe. And certainly uh, right now where this, uh, where COVID-19 is a respiratory disease, that could be a, a very devastating for someone who would contract COVID um, and who would be vaping or smoking for that matter. Absolutely. And even people who have, um, you know, the process of vaping or smoking, it accelerates the aging of your lungs. So when you quit, it prevents that from um, moving forward so quickly, but it can't go back in time. So if there's one thing you could do to help yourself right now, besides staying home, it would be to look at uh, stopping smoking or vaping. And I hear a lot of people will say to us, well, this is the time when I'm my most stressed and anxious, but they do have nicotine replacement therapy and the nicotine is actually what you're craving. So you can get that and it will take the edge off. And there's a lot of really good um, information and counseling available. Uh, Elaine has a wonderful cessation program. She also refers to the Maine Tobacco Helpline, which provides free nicotine replacement therapy. So there was ever a time uh, that quitting is important and maybe you're ready to do it, now would be the time to consider it. And that's the perfect segue to Elaine's site to talk about how that's happening right now and how those services are still available to folks who might have otherwise thought, you know, those really need to be one-on-one -on -one services or in-person services. But uh, you're proving that that's not the case, Elaine, and you're still able to have that personal contact and connection with folks. How are you making your work happen in these times? We're doing Zoom meetings, which is uh, ACAP has gone to Zoom meetings, and we're finding it uh, very successful. Um, so I'll be having Zoom meetings, and it's actually uh, a nice idea because I have had somebody in Holton that wanted to be in a meeting, and I had somebody in Madawaska that wanted to be in a meeting. Well, I could never have the two have to drive an hour and a half, you know, to meet in Presque Isle or something. So the idea of a Zoom meeting uh, is actually very nice because we can all meet together uh, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, um, even though they're miles apart. So... Um, I think that's going to be a great resource, even when we can get back together and have group meetings. I think our Zoom meetings uh, will also be very nice, um, especially like in the wintertime when I had snowstorm, I couldn't make it to meetings or something. Now we can just say, let's Zoom and mm -hmm. we can do it that way. Absolutely. So walk us through this program. It's, a, it's, it's not that, we, that ACAP hasn't done uh, tobacco cessation in the past. Joellen uh, worked on that with her colleague, um, Don Roberts, for a number of years. Um, but this is, a, this is a, a different program and a new initiative funded in part by a grant. So tell us all about it. Yeah, it is a completely free program because my grant is through Maine Cancer Foundation. Um, and I work with uh, a program called the Fresh Start Program, and that's from American Cancer Society. And we get together in group sessions. Um, I can get you to uh, nicotine, nicotine replacement therapy through the Quit Link. Um, it's, it's a great program where we actually have group support, and we walk you through um, trying to decide when you want to quit picking your quit date, explaining what's going to happen to you while you're quitting. Uh, you know, your body goes through different changes. And after you quit, they actually keep going and uh, be just a support group for getting you to the point where you are quit and um, being a healthier person. Great. Now, now Elaine, um, that process um, can involve a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, but there's also the peer work that happens there. You're talking about Madawaska and Holton and trying to bridge those folks together because there is some benefit to bringing people together who have a shared experience with this, is there not? Absolutely. We, I, my last group was a, a great group and all of us got really close. You know, it's just, um, you become friends and, and the, the smokers in the room, I, unfortunately I've never smoked, so I can't say my my situations but the smokers in the room would share stories and say you know this is how it was for me and this is what I did and and it, it's great support and they all really uh, appreciate it and it helps it really has and I've ta I talk to them frequently still um, and 
they're always asking about the other person. So it's a close, it's, it's stopped being a close group. Joellen indicated earlier that you can't really turn the clock back um, on when, when you've used tobacco in terms of some of the damage that's done. But through some of the work that you're doing, there are incentives on the other side. There are health improvements that happen just by the act of quitting. And so you have another graphic here that uh, demonstrates, and we'll bring that up on the screen for folks to see, and maybe you can walk us through what some of the benefits that people will recognize uh, pretty quickly and then uh, more long term. It is amazing when you think the 20 minutes after you've had your last cigarette, your blood pressure drops to normal. Eight hours after you've had your last cigarette, your carbon monoxide level in your blood drops to normal. Your oxygen level increases to normal. 24 hours after you've had your last cigarette, your chance of a heart attack decreases. 48 hours after your ability to smell and taste is enhanced. And the one that really is so important is between two and three months, your lung function increases up to 30%. And right now with the COVID-19 affecting everyone's lungs, we've got to get these people healthy and you've got to quit smoking. Um, and you can do it. Uh, we have the support system. We have ways to help you. Just give us a call. Anna, you can look on, on, the, on the sheet right here. Once you hit uh, you know, up to 15 years, uh, your, your lung cancer death rate is similar to that of a non-smoker. So exactly. you can't erase uh, some of the, the damage that's been done, but you can certainly change. And so if you're, you're looking here in Aroostook County, um, you're working with individuals who have grandchildren and that's bought time for many with grandchildren uh, and multi-generational families. Yes, 25% of the people in Aroostook County smoke. That's a lot of people. And so many things can happen when you quit smoking. Uh, you save a lot of money. <laughs> you uh, get to interact more with your family because you're not hanging out outside smoking a cigarette. Um, and it's a proven fact that you live longer. And what better uh, reason than that? And many people for their reason to want to quit is I want to see my grandchildren grow up or I want to be with my wife, you know, forever. Um, those are great reasons. And we keep stressing what the re what's the reason that you want to quit. And it, it brings back what they want to quit for. And it just helps them along the way. Great. Thank you, Elaine. And, and Meg Hegman, you certainly, some of this information transfers very well over into some of the work that you do uh, on the prevention side as it relates to the Drug-Free Communities Grant uh, that we receive through the uh, substance abuse and mental health services uh, through the federal government. Um, and, but you also work with a local coalition of individuals called Drug Free Aroostook. Um, and, and a lot of that work is about really stopping drug use before it even starts. So talk to me about in your relatively new role, um, what you're picking up and what your message is to the community. Sure. So I'm really appreciative of all the work that the coalition and our various partners have done through the years um, to make a difference in the community because ideally we don't want people to get to the point where they need to stop. But I think one of the critical things um, that helps from a prevention effort is to have some understanding of, of why people become addictive in the first place, um, why nicotine and other products can be so damaging and why it is so hard to quit. And if you look at um, the tobacco cessation programs, the majority of people who smoke started when they were a young age, started when they were adolescents. And so what we've learned over the years is that um, brains develop uh, from back to front. So you get your, you don't have to be conscious about your breathing, right? When you're born, you know that you have to breathe. And so your brain stem is the first part of the brain that is already in place. But a lot of the behaviors that we, uh, that we know kind of contribute to addiction rates and substance use disorders have to do with the natural brain development, things that we really didn't know um, when I was growing up even, and certainly not when uh, my father or others who uh, are in the smoking cessation programs now, we didn't know these things then. The science has really um, developed a lot over the years. But now that we know that our brains aren't fully developed in terms of the part that controls our, our reasoning, our rational thought, and the ability to, 
to um, understand those motivating factors that Elaine talked about, we don't have that part of our brain fully developed until about 25. And so uh, it's important that we have these conversations and get the information out to younger and younger generations because using those substances when we're younger uh, gets in the way not only of lung development with those tobacco products that they were talking about, but our brain development as well. And that's true with nicotine, it's true with uh, marijuana, with alcohol, with all sorts of other drugs. And, and that substance use disorder is a chronic illness. And the earlier we can get to addressing that, the better off we are as individuals, as our families, and as our society as a whole. So Meg, how do we um, change the trajectory then? Now that we understand better the science, how do you turn that into a messaging that matches and reaches intended audiences so that we can prevent uh, further you know, uh, challenges with substance use in our communities? One of the things that I think is really, really important is to recognize that it's not a moral failure and that it's not a parenting failure. I think a lot of people who end up using substances and abusing them and ultimately often becoming addicted, there's a lot of shame around that. And isolation is a, a real close friend of addiction and uh, substance use disorders. And so the more we can talk about it, the more we can reduce the stigma and the more we can educate, the better off we all become. So there, the, the good news is that um, you've seen the trajectory they've talked about and, and how addiction can, can come on. And the graph there shows you that for adults, even things that we consider and that are more socially acceptable like alcohol, okay? Alcohol, drinking alcohol is legal over 21, so people tend to think that it's safe. Uh, even smoking cigarettes over 18, people have a tendency to think, well, if it's approved, then, then it must be safe. And that is simply not the case. So for an adult, someone who's over 25, um, it, they could begin using alcohol after 25, and it could take a long time. If they're going to develop a substance use disorder, it can take five to 15 years. But if you start using those products when you're an adolescent, it takes much less time to become addicted. And for children, it's even lower. And so the great news is that prevention efforts really do work. Since 2015, uh, when we first got the, um, the grant for this Drug-Free Communities Coalition and started doing the work, alcohol use among high school seniors has decreased by 7%. That's huge. That's, that makes a really big difference. So once people know the risks and once people um, start delaying use of substances, it really does make a difference in our communities, in the use rates and those, the number of people who go on to develop substance use disorders. I heard you say um, in, in part of what you just mentioned, use the word isolation. Is that part of the reason why, one of the many I'm sure, reasons why prevention efforts right now are more important than ever because a lot of people may be feeling isolated uh, for obvious reasons? Sure, so isolation and, and stress is a natural trigger. And uh, so a lot of people are very, very stressed for obvious reasons right now. And so I think the opportunity that we have in this time is that you have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about positive ways to manage stress. So meditation, exercise, um, different things. You have the time to really uh, learn some yoga, learn some meditation techniques learn to manage stress more in a healthier way so that you're not using substances to decrease your stress and to manage it. Because a lot of people start negative behaviors to manage their stress. I think the critical thing is for parents to start having the conversation. As you mentioned, Jason, a lot of people are spending more time with their teenagers than they ever have before. And so it's a great time, maybe you're sitting watching a movie or maybe you're watching TV and you see a commercial and you think, you know what, I don't know that we've ever actually had this conversation before. Do you know why I don't want you to smoke? Do you know why it is that I don't want you to start drinking right now? Or, hey, have you tried that yet? And without a shame base, it's not about having a confrontation with your teenager, 
but about having the conversation and being um, a positive role model and saying, you know what, it's been a long day and I'm really frustrated. I'm going to go take a walk right now. Rather than saying, it's a long day, I'm frustrated, pour me a drink. That's not healthy um, and it's not good um, role modeling. And we want children of all ages are going to follow their parents. As much as teenagers want to say, they're not listening to you. The science shows that they really are. So it's important to have those conversations right now when you can. And in relation to that, Meg, there is a resource out there that parents can turn to. Uh, I think we have a slide here uh, that, that speaks to that. So why don't you talk about the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids or drugfree.org? Sure. So the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids has a million resources, really, really helpful. There are video clips, there are um, tip sheets that you can talk how to have that conversation with your child. So there are things, maybe you yourself are a smoker, or maybe you yourself um, have a drink now and then, and be ready for your child to call you a hypocrite. And so there are actually talking sheets for people who do or who have used substances and how to approach that with your adolescent, with your child. If you find uh, signs that your child is using, maybe your prescription bottle is missing some pills or you're finding evidence um, in trash cans around the house or, or seeing your child experience those withdrawal symptoms that Joellen talked about, how do you, what do you do now? Uh, there are talk sheets and tip sheets for that. There's the toll-free number there. There's a, you can text for help. Um, it's a really great website that shows how to address things in an effective way, backed by, uh, backed by the research. So you're not just flying blind. There are a lot of people and a lot of resources out there to help you have those conversations. Great, certainly some great resources all shared with us, but um, last thoughts. We'll start with you, Meg. Um, anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to make uh, the community aware of? So there's an old uh, proverb that says the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. And that applies to having a conversation with your children of whatever age, that they need to know where you stand on drug and alcohol abuse or use. And they need to know why it's important that they delay their experimentation until, oh, 25, 30. <laughs> and that it's, it can head bad very quickly. So the best time to have had that conversation was before now, but the second best time is now. It's never too early and it's never too late. Good advice. Elaine Syke, your last thoughts and anything that we haven't covered as it relates to tobacco cessation in your program. Yeah, I think, uh, just call me. Uh, you, know, you may think, oh, it's too hard. I'm too stressed right now. But actually having a support system anytime helps you. And people need to be talking to each other now, even if we can only do it through Zoom. Um, just being able to have a connection. And maybe today is the perfect time because get, get yourself healthy. You have kids that want you healthy, you have green kids that want you healthy, and it's important for yourself. Um, there's never a better time than now. So give us a call. I would love to help you. And Joelle and Kelly, I'll let the last word be yours. Anything we missed or anything else that you wanted to impart uh, to the community? Well, I'd like to say, remember to set a good example. I think that we all kind of were talking about uh, the things that everybody could do. So if you set a good example, that you move forward in the right way. The second thing I would like to say that in the tobacco prevention world, we do a lot of policy work. Um, so it isn't just always about uh, referrals in tobacco use. It's the upfront work we do to try to keep uh, the standards in place so that you're not, people are not seen smoking, so that what's um, the norm is not, not uh, seeing it and not being around it. And, of course, reducing secondhand exposure to our children. So because we always like to talk money at ACAP, um, we do have some mini grants in the tobacco prevention world, especially for workplaces, municipalities, and so who are working on policy or who are interested. So I'm putting that plug in so they are more than welcome to reach out to me. And though I can't visit them, I certainly can help them with a the policy and make sure they have a little uh, stipend to help them get it going. 
So thank Yet you. another great resource that's out there for folks. Thank you very much, uh, Elaine, Joellen, and Meg for your time here on ACAP today and for uh, helping our community be better informed about uh, wonderful programs that are available to them and how we are partnering with the community to, to keep everyone healthier in, in this challenging time. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, before we leave you today, we want to just remind you that in fact, we are indeed all in this together. Uh, and that ACAP is here for you. If you'd like to reach any one of the individuals uh, on today's program, we can certainly connect you, even though they're working from home, we can connect you with them. So call us at 764-3721 and we'll be happy to do so. You can also connect with us at acap-info at acap-me.org. Uh, visit us online at acap-me.org or check us out on Facebook. Our, our team here um, actually has their own page that um, talks about some of the prevention work that they do, but we also try to repost it on our ACAP site as well. Uh, and then look for us on YouTube. Uh, we have some wonderful uh, educational programs there, including some great stories that are available uh, and, and activities for children uh, that can be shared to any children in the community, not just those who take advantage of our Head Start program. So we do invite you to do that. And lastly, today we end as we always do with our snapshot of the, of the day. This is Riley, a student in ACAP's traditional Head Start program based at the Holton Center on Military Street in Holton. Riley is enjoying one of the many activities sent to her by her classroom teachers. She wanted to let us know how much she has loved all the educational materials that have been delivered to her at home by our team. So Riley there really enjoying her at home activities. Thank you to Riley, thank you to Riley's parents, and thank you to the educators who have provided her with those services uh, at home uh, and delivered them every day. And thank you to all of you for joining us today um, on ACAP Today. That's all we have for you. Be sure to join us tomorrow uh, for another edition of ACAP Today when we're going to look at a new program, a rental assistance program uh, that will be introduced formally uh, tomorrow here in the state of Maine. And we'll have all of the details for you on ACAP Today tomorrow. For now, have a great rest of the evening. I'm Jason Parent on behalf of the entire ACAP team. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>